Hey, with us now, the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, Democratic Congressman Keith Ellison of Minnesota. He's running for the chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Uh, how's the race going, Mr. Chairman, possibly Mr. Chairman to be? <laughs> it's going fine. Uh, thanks for asking. You know, we're talking to folks every day, uh, talking about the future of the Democratic Party, where we want to go. A grassroots party, a party really connected to uh, the base and the rank and file, prioritizing voter turnout in every election up and down the ballot. That's what we're working on. All right, great. Hey, let me ask you about um, uh, CNN uh, online did, did, had a couple of quotes from the past. Uh, we'll put a couple of them up. Uh, and what do you say to people who are concerned about past statements, uh, like, for instance, Minister uh, Farrakhan is a role model for black youth, wrote Ellison at Insight News op-ed in 1995. He is not an anti-Semite. And then they also said that even in 2000, Ellison publicly defended violent fringe elements of the far left. What, uh, what are your responses to uh, the CNN reporting and other people that bring up uh, this past? I think that it is uh, bad reporting because I have a 10-year record in Congress. I have a four-year record in the Minnesota State House. I practiced law for 16 years right. and did a lot. I mean, and I just think that you know it's just that kind of reporting that uh, you know just that sort of is not quality and doesn't help people understand so the real issues. Is, so just to clear, clarify it, then based on again all these quotes and sort of the the buzz out there, what CNN and others were reporting on what you said before. Do you believe that Louis Farrakhan is an anti-Semite? Sure, but I mean, what does he have to do with anything going on in this race or this country well, you, at this time? Absolutely some, nothing. Well, CNN, I mean, look, CNN it was a says that you've you've said some positive things about Minister Farrakhan, a role model for black youth. But here's the thing, Joe. We're talking about something that happened in 1995. Right. This, was, this was a year that the Million Man March took off. Right. People were attacking the march at the time. The march was a very good thing. I was very proud to be part of it. But here I am having to answer questions about right. this and I'm not talking about what our country needs to look like and what the Democratic Party can do because this smear campaign from almost 21 years ago right. or something like that is this is about distracting and taking people away from the issues that really are at hand in this case right. really? and you know I think it serves somebody's political purpose to push this stuff right. but it doesn't serve the public interest to serve it but you there know, are, uh, Congressman, there are some Jewish Democrats who look back, and if you're going to lead the party, they look at those comments with some fear and some trepidation. Do you disavow quotes like that, the one we just read? Man, I'm telling you, back in 2006 and before, I disavowed them. Right. That's the ridiculous thing about this. Okay. That we keep on having to answer this kind of stuff. But let me tell you, it's not that people are, I don't think people are, who are pushing it are genuinely curious. They don't want to talk about what the Democratic Party needs to look like to be an effective vehicle for the hopes and dreams of average yeah. Americans. So they bring up this kind of stuff yeah. and get you to make, get, make me right. answer so this kind of stuff well, on national television. Congressman, you've, you've led me to my next question then. Uh, as head of the DNC, you'll be asked obviously to diagnose what exactly happened in 2016, how Hillary Clinton came so close but lost the race for the White House. As you look at it right now, Congressman, what is your diagnosis? What happened? Why did Hillary Clinton lose? Well, the most proximate cause is that we lost about by about 76,000 votes in three states. Uh, but I, and I think the real answer is voter turnout. How do we turn out the vote uh, in places like Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, places like Pennsylvania? Let me tell you, in Minnesota, which is right in that belt of those uh, uh, in the industrial Midwest, we survived that wave because we prioritized voter turnout. And in my district, in the 5th District of Minnesota, when I first got to Congress, we had the lowest congressional turnout in my state. And but now even Minnesota highest, was a lot closer than it should have been, right? But we survived the wave. Why? Because we prioritized turnout. That's the real issue. There will be waves. Every party is going to have its own ebb and flow. How do we survive it? We prioritize turnout. And in my state of Minnesota, we have uh, made turnout. Uh, I've had the, I have the highest turnout, and we have four constitutional officers who are all Democrats because we prioritize voter turnout, two senators who are Democrats because we prioritize turnout. That's what I'm good at, good at and I think I can bring it to the national stage. There you go, Congressman Keith Ellison. Thank you very, very much. Thanks a lot. Thank We've got Senator. Now. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.